Welcome back to Sloth Box. I'm Lyndon Dixon, and as usual, this video is brought to you by the Excelsior Sports Club. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, the man with a world record I couldn't quite believe, the world's oldest active boxer, Steve Ward. Steve, how are you getting on, mate? Good morning. How are you? Yes, not too bad. Before we talk about that crazy world record, I want to take it right back. How did you start off in boxing? It was the usual scenario. I was getting bullied at school. And then my dad, one particular day, I got back and uh, back home and he says, you've been crying. I says, yeah, yeah. He says, I'll tell you when you can cry. And he slapped me around the tab like. He says, and I'll give you something to cry about. He says, you don't come back here shedding tears. It was very, very hard nature, my dad was, but mm. I loved him to bits. Now, he wanted me to start doing boxing. I was nine years old. I didn't want to do boxing. I wanted to be out with my pals and that. But no, he wanted me to do the boxing. So uh, he always got his way. <laughs> he took me up to a club quite near to us called Nottingham School of Boxing. Mm. And uh, he... He went in and he said to know one or two of them, the trainers. He says, I want you to put him in the ring when he's had enough training, tuft him up, put him in with the older lads, let him knock him about a bit. <laughs> I thought, oh, God, this is going to be a catastrophe, this is. So it went on. First year, I'm getting knocked about, I tell mm. you. They were putting me in the ring. There weren't many, many weeks I come home and not got a wobbly tooth, a blood and mm. nose, or a bit of a black eye. And I thought, I think I'd sooner take the chances with the bullies at school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, what it all come about, my dad was going blind fast. Mm. And uh, I was like a guide to him. He used to put his hand on my shoulder and we'd go out for a walk somewhere. And the guys from school had seen me and then they'd met life hard. Mm. Oh, an old man, he'd got his hand on his shoulder. You know the scenario. Yeah. Well, it got to the stage, not so much before 10 year old, but when I was 11, I started to have the fights because you can fight from 11, as you know. Mm. And I was getting that bit of confidence. And by God, I. Uh, I wasn't taking no, no crap off them at school anymore. Yeah. Let's just say that. Well, we're getting in trouble all the time because they were fighting. Yeah. The teachers used to think I was the bully and I was the bad one. They didn't realise what was happening. But uh, this one particular day, I'd be, what, perhaps 13, maybe 14. I was in the gym. I'd gone into the gymnasium and this guy... I even remember his name, Stephen Sedgwick. It's funny, them names you never get rid of. <laughs> they always that. stick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, what it was, he, he thought he was some type of Zorro. He'd got this badminton racket in his hand. And it was straight round the temples with it. Mm. Well, I didn't get down or anything. I could feel the lump coming up. I turned round, walked out of the gym into the changing room. Had a look in the mirror. It had already started to come up like an egg. I thought, now what do I do here? If I go home, tell me dad what I've done, uh, what's happened. First thing you'll see, and did you hit him back? <laughs> now, if I go in there and I hit him, I'm going to get in trouble anyhow. So uh, mm. I went back in. He continued to try and hit me with it. Went underneath, body punch, up, up, up double up to the head, bang, bang, he went down. I grabs a fistful of air, pulling him up to hit him again with a right hand. <laughs> As you do. <clears throat> and uh, all at once, I got this sensation of being lifted up by my ear. Mr. Acklin, the gym master, he says, let him go, Ward. 
He said, you're no more than a bully. I didn't even point to the lump walk mm. the door outside my face. He wanted to listen. He says, get in that changing room, and he more or less threw me by my ear. Mm. I went into the changing room. He followed me in. Mr. Acklin, fit guy like, knows his bits and bobs, but he made one big mistake. He took these boxing gloves at me. And it was those old horsehair type ones. Well, mm. for me, they were only about two inches below my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> he says, put them on. He says, I'm going to teach you some manners. And then he took me back into the gym. We're not going to ring. It was just an open space. But by now, there were about 300 kids in there. And of course, when we both went in with boxing gloves on, all the cheers went mm. up. God. And uh, he started to jab at me. I thought, well, what do I do here? And I'm making him miss backwards and forwards. And, <laughs> it. and he kept going and coming forward. I thought, I've had enough of this. So I waited for his jab to come, parried it, bang! Right on, straight on the nose. Oh. He went down. He got back up. It's coming for me again. I thought, oh, here we We've got no option. Mm. So right up the court, left up, he went down again. He got back up. Tough guy. And he's coming for me really fast and furious. And uh, he went straight on to a right hand and it hit him on the nose. His nose actually exploded. Oh. There were blood all over. We went down and all the kids are cheering, <laughs> you know. Mm. And uh, I'm stood over him. It must have been like uh, Ali and Liston <laughs> are. <laughs> and uh, he got back up and you'll never, ever dream of what he said to me. Now, what would you think he'd have said after that? Uh, he probably would have told you to get out of the gym. No. What did he say? He says, he shrugged his shoulders. He says, All right, Ward, let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought, oh, this is a lesson I don't mind learning. <laughs> yeah. Of course, when I went back home, like, and I told my dad, my dad were over the, over the mountain with mm. me, you know, I thought, oh, dear. But do you know that man, that Mr. Ackland, actually, he was a nice guy. And he was good at what he'd done. But he never spoke to me again until the day I was leaving the school. I'd be mm. 15. And they come over and he shut me out. Uh, I better not say the exact words, what he said. <laughs> <am I? laughs> he just said, uh, well, you done me down, didn't you? Yes, says, what do you mean, Mr. Ackland? He says, you didn't let me know that you are a boxer and what you'd won and what you hadn't won. He says, I think I'd have liked to have spoke to you more than fight with you. <laughs> <laughs> wise, wise after the event. Mm. Just, uh, Nadan, I don't know what your name is, your first name. Uh, Lyndon. Right, Lyndon, just one minute. I just want to get my wife because I've got a nasty big white patch in the middle of this screen. Yeah. And I can't see your face. No worries, mate. No worries. One second. Yep. So obviously, like we we spoke about that world record, but you first fought in the the seventies and the eighties, and then it was yes. cut short a little bit. Talk to me about that first stint as a pro. Right, I'd had the uh, I'd had the amateur experience from oh, let's see, that would be nine years, eleven years old. I had one hundred and forty eight amateurs. <sighs> I lost 12, I won 136, I had 70-odd stoppages. That's a record. Then, <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Never satisfied. Then I went pro in uh, 77, it was. And to be honest with you, I, I was doing all right. Then the worst thing ever happened to me. 
my dad died and my push power went mm. and I mean really really went I wasn't bothered about the boxing I didn't know whether I wanted to continue doing it I didn't realise at that time in my life what a big incentive and pusher my dad was to me yeah but uh, I was turning up for fights. I'm not proud of this. I was turning up for what fights. I've not even seen a gym, let alone been in one. Mm. And uh, I was losing fights. What I should have won, this, that, and the other. Uh, I was with Ken Page for my first couple of fights. Then I went to Cole Guns and we had Tony Simpson, which he was a good promoter. Good manager, but he didn't always turn up, bless him. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes you're sort of left in the lurch. Mm. You, you've got nobody there. That's no good. So I ended up with Jimmy Gill, the Nottingham promoter. And for all his little faults, he, he was all right. He, he was always there. He always turned up. He always got you to the fight. He was what he should be, but... Uh, I won't go into what else it was because I don't want to tomorrow. Mm. Mm. I, I I like the guy. Uh, I finished pro in it was eighty seven, eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, I finished pro for the simple reason I was being held out. I wanted to fight a guy called Dennis Sheehan. It was the Midlands area. Like we're light middleweight champion. Yeah. And uh, it just wasn't happening. It offered him money. Jimmy offered him money to come on the fight and that. Dave Needham, you remember Dave Needham probably. I've heard that name, yeah. Commonwealth Games gold medalist, this, that, the other. Yeah. Uh, he fought under Mickey Duff. Yeah. Now, Dave were giving me some of the fights as well. But he was always protecting Dennis Sheehan. And the fun part is, they need him, Dennis Sheehan and myself all come from not school of boxing. <laughs> and there was always that little bit of, well, little bit of closeness between me and yeah. Sheehan, like who was the best. And it, uh, I couldn't get him in the ring. It had all be set up. For a certain date, and then it'd be called off again, called off again. Mm. Needham were protecting him right, left, and centre. And then one particular day, he should have been defending his uh, area title against Richard Wilson of Non Eaton. He had an accident, so it left him in a mess. They sold every ticket to Monford or Leicester. They needed somebody to step in at a minute's notice. <laughs> The chance had just arrived. Mm. They asked me if I'd do it. And uh, I said, oh, yes, yes, I'll do it. I'm fit enough, yeah. Mm. And uh, I stopped him in the fifth round. <sighs> threw him down a couple of times, cut him to bits. And uh, I stopped him. But they had the last laugh on me. The lousy buggers made it a non-title fight because I wasn't the named opponent. So I couldn't get him after that. I thought, you know, I've had enough. Mm. And I finished this bro. Yeah. And when when I finished, I can remember coming my last fight, I forget where it was, but I was coming back to the changing room and this guy, he he, he got hold of my glove in the audience as I was coming back up. He says, hey, You've been good through these years, he says, and you've kept going as well. He says, it's fantastic. He says, bit of something for you. He says, and please read it. And he shoved something in me, gloves. Mm. I got back to the changing room and you, you're talking about the fight and that, and I forgot about it. And when they took the gloves off, it, it fell on the floor. And it was a big roll of 50 pound notes. Oh, nice. And uh, it's got a note round it. Mm. 
the note simply said, when you get fed up of retirement, which you will, in brackets, <laughs> contact this number. Now, he was a, he were a foreign guy. Mm. I couldn't tell what he was, but he were foreign. And uh, <laughs> here, about a week later, I was fed up. I contacted <laughs> him. <laughs> also, curiosity as well. Come mm, on. Yeah. You'd have done the same, wouldn't you? Of course. And uh, I ended up, he wanted me to go down London, Buckingham, Chenier there. Mm. He says, uh, come down as my guest. I want to talk to you. I want to you know, converse with you. Well, I didn't just go down. I had a limousine come and collect me, which, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was something, mm. especially where I was living at that time, because a limousine in that area was, well, that's yeah. <laughs> it. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, went down, I can't tell you his name for, you know, mm. reasons. But to cut it all short, he uh, he hosted me really well. I still didn't know why I was there. There's some no reason why I should be there. Mm. Till uh, this day, he said, uh, "Would you like to come with me tonight? I'm going to uh, some fights." Now I thought fights, boxing fights. Mm knuckle fights yeah and it wasn't the usual in a barn or in a shed bare knuckle fights these were really proper mm. and uh, as it was halfway through he says uh, would you like to have a go at it i said i'd have to seriously think about this seriously think and uh, i ended up going home you know two days after it was, and they wanted me to think on it and ponder on it. And now I, I decided to, I decided to have a go. Mm. And I'll cut it all really short because it's a long drawn out job. I ended up having 41 and winning 41. Ooh. Round the world. Oh. Bloody hell. It was Italian. It was Italian. And the mm. people who were looking after me were Italian. But uh, looked after me really, really well. Mm. You, you met some big people, big connections. That's why I can't say anything, obviously. Yeah, I understand, that. yeah. I've wrote a book, my autobiography's out, and it's yeah. the same in there. I use different names. But uh, I loved it. I did like it. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't easy walk over fights. By God, you know, one <laughs> or two. Whereas you, you wouldn't have thought I were in me a chance how the fight was going. And then I'd just pull it off. In every, every combat sport, there's always a commodity of techni technicality, how you are, you know what you're doing, but you've also got an amount of luck in it. And every box will all tell you, without the luck, one doesn't fall in order without the other. And I enjoyed it. But then I had a serious accident because uh, I was also working as well. I was trying yeah. to pull everything in. And I had a ton and a quarter lump of concrete fall on my foot. <laughs> Yeah, cool. that that right foot is now one whole size bigger than the left. A foot. whole size. Then, <laughs> yeah, so don't ever follow me into a shoe shop because I switched, <laughs> I switched them. So I've got one of each. I've got a size eleven and a size twelve. Cool. I'm not paying double price. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, so you had that injury, and then yeah. lo and behold, in the future. You make a comeback. T talk to me about the reasons behind the comeback. What made you, you know, get up and go after it again? Right. What it what it actually was, that injury, they said I'd never walk again. Yeah. 
I never walked walk without a severe limp and that. All the street specialists, this is. Mm. And uh, you're telling a guy who's boxed from nine years old, done all this, he's never going to walk again. I, I couldn't, I mm. couldn't hack it. Oh, it, it sent me on a real depressive mode. I tried silly things as well. Mm. I was adding for a real downfall. And this this young lad, I used to do martial arts as well, and this young lad, he come to me, Chinese guy, says, my uncle say he can make you better. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I tried everything. I was clutching at straws. Mm. If you'd have said, I can make you better, I'd have said, do it, please do it. Yeah. Well, when they said that, I thought, there we go, London or Birmingham. I says, where is it, London or Birmingham? He says, he in China. I says, oh, well. Whew. I says, I, I couldn't possibly go out there without talking to him. Yeah. And he arranged phone call and everything. And uh, this guy, he could tell no way, wrong way, he was some type of surgeon. And I ended up going out to Hong Kong, Kowloon, just opposite Hong Kong. And the rest, well, I can't remember too much because it was paid for all under the counter yeah. naughtily. And uh, they were taking me to one place. I was doped up, taking me to another. I was doped up and they were doing things. But in the end, he uh, he done it. He actually done it. This particular day, I come round and I was in the hotel bed this day, and they were sat at the side of me. He says, "You were as good as you will be." I says, "Right." And he arranged for the nurse to come down for a few days to change the dressing. I says, "Do I just rest now and then go home?" I says, "No, no." He says, "You you walk up Nathan Road and back, Nathaniel Road and back every day." He neglected to tell me it was three and a half miles long. Oh. And it was red hot as well. It was warm. 2000. Was it 2010? No, 2006. Mm. So uh, that were it like, you know, he healed it. I come back. We're still having to change dressings and all yeah. this. And I don't know what he actually done, but I've had a lot of people want me to pass his name on, but I never would because he made me promise not to do that. He didn't want any thin off it. Now, God bless him, his dad. He yeah. died. But what a guy. Mm, yeah, to do that and, uh, after you've yeah. been told you'd never walk again, to then go on to do what you have done, that's impressive. Yeah. But... Just like I said, talk to me about the reasons behind the comeback because you became the right. oldest active fighter in boxing. Why? Now, this is Why did happened. you do it? This is what's happened. I said to people before I went out to China, if I get my mobility back, if mm. I'll get back in that ring and I'll show you all what I can do. Now, when, when I come back, it was months after light. I started going for longer walks and longer walks and faster walks and a bit faster every day. Then I thought, it's time to try and jog. Whew. I remember the pain from that day, honestly. It was un unbelievable. But then I done my jog, done a walk, and I kept doing on that, and I kept building and building and mm. building on it. Then I went to a boxing gym and I started training. Then I started doing the sparring and I thought, Stevie boy, you're all right, lad. <laughs> now I get back on some. I was only 54. Yeah. <laughs> only. <laughs> and I thought, we can do something here now. And of course, boxing board of control won't want to know. Mm. Not interested. So what I've done, the EBF, the European Boxing Federation. Now, I've got a friend who's a manager in that. Former boxer, Johnny Ashton. Mm. Fought for the uh, British titles, I believe. But anyhow, good guy. 
And I went to him, I says, uh, you got a minute job? He says, yeah, for you, Steve, any time. He says, well, I can help you. He says, quite simple, really, I want to fight. He says, how old are you? <laughs> I said, oh. And they were laughing, he says, are you aiming me? I says, I'm not joking, John. I want to fight. Hmm. I says, you can't hit 54. I says, why not? He says, he says, all right. He says, listen, this is what we'll do. Come sparring on Sunday. We'll see how you go on with people your own weight, professionals. I says, yeah, okay. Knocked them all about, didn't I? I says, now what do you do? He says, he says I suppose I have to get you a fight sorted. <laughs> it was in Derby. It was at the Pennine Hotel. I was fighting this guy from Leeds called Andy Myers. He just looked like Mike Tyson to look at. Yeah. And uh, I think I was supposed to lose and scuttle off and not be heard of anymore. Knocked him down a few times, stopped him, didn't I? You were back. Next, at that moment, you was back. Well, the next fight, I was fighting a guy who'd been in with David A. It was a bit of a flu happening. Mm. His opponent had to drop out. He was the cruiserweight Midlands area champion. They want after I fought him. <laughs> <laughs> you beat him for the title. Yeah, yeah. And I kept creeping up and creeping up there. Like then I had a, another accident. Not my fault yet again. Mm. This time it was me and it got caught in an industrial concrete mixer. Oh, it's all disfigured and mm. yummy and that, but I can hit with it. <laughs> That's all that matters, mate. Yeah. So, so what it is, um, and they're like, I've got this bad hand, I've got to get it done, got it sorted out as best I could, train it back up, realise that I could steal it, it hurt like mad, but I could steal it, so let's go for it. Mm. And I started pushing towards world title fight. Now, European Boxing Federation, it sort of, it got too big for them. Yeah. Now, you must have heard of Bieber, British Irish Boxing Authority. Yeah. In competition, we, Boxing Water Control and mm. that, they always falling out. And, well, I got licensed on the Bieber. I had to have an extensive medical, especially because of my age. Yeah. Everything comes through. They said, you're like a 23-year-old. <laughs> yeah, this is what I want to hear. Mm. Well, in 2017, I ended up fighting Andreas Sidden. Now, you know, uh, Danny Williams knocked Mike Tyson out. Yeah. Andreas Sidden knocked Danny Williams out. And I'm fighting him. All six foot nine of him. Big German. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> and uh, brought the fight in Mansfield. And it was 12 three-minute rounds. I was 60-odd. Anyhow, gets in there. First six rounds, I've got him. I won the first six rounds outright. Mm. In fact, twice in round three and round five, it was saved by the bell. Yeah, really done me at it. Mm. I comes out for round seven and I'm feeling great. My rotator cuff went in my arm. Oh. Couldn't, couldn't do anything about it. You know, throwing the punches as good as I could, but my arm were down. I couldn't protect myself. Mm. And he caught me. And I went down, got back up, and the ref come over to me and says, I'm so sorry, Steve, he says, but I know a rotator cuff injury. I want to see it. He says the fight stopped. And even Andreas himself come to me and says, you would have won. He says, <laughs> my corner says, I not won a round. Mm. I won every round, clearly. Some... 
really clearly. Yeah. You know. But uh, I got the rotator cuff done. I got it done within a month after. Oh, I really pushed it. I pulled every string I could to get it done. I wanted to get back in that ring, didn't I? <laughs> well, they couldn't let me in straight away to got to strengthen up and all this mm. again. But I, I started to work on it. And I actually went across to Germany to see him, Andreas, because I wanted to ask, would he be prepared to do it again? Yeah. But, you know, when I got across there, I realised the fight had never happened. He just wasn't, he didn't seem well in himself. Yeah. And uh, probably from the punches, you don't know, because he, he was stuttering a lot and mm. it was terrible to see. So I came back home and I thought, well, I can't do anything then. And that was in 2017 or 14. Now that was 2019, I'd gone across. Yeah. And they decided to make a film of me. Oh, it's all happening. Honestly, Lyndon. Hollywood. It's all happening. <laughs> Hollywood yeah. came now, you're not like that, aren't you? This film is called The Champ of Champs. It won 40-odd international film awards worldwide, including Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, we won it. And New York. Yeah, we won New York, Hollywood and Cannes Film Festival. But we couldn't go across because of the COVID. Mm, mate. And uh, only last week, they actually had the first film festival ever in Mansfield, and it won an award there, the Best mate. Documentary Award. So That's of course, quality. Because of that happening, they've done the autobiography mm. called The Legend. And that's selling well. But more to the point, you know, because that come, the film and that, it brought everything alive again. Mm. And uh, I went down to Leeds. I went to see the Bieber top men and everything. I says, Who's the who's the world champion like? Blah blah blah. They told me. I says, I want to fight him. Oh God, not again, Steve. Yeah, no. <laughs> they've heard it before. <laughs> yeah. So to save it all, to cut it all short for yeah. you, the fight was on. Lovely. It was going to be in Mansfield yet again in my own town in front of my own crowd, because I wanted them to see me and do them proud and that. Mm. I fought to uh, Adrian Paloga, very experienced Romanian fighter. Got no respect for me at all, no respect for England at all. It nearly kicked off in the actual medical room we us both. He shouldered me, I went for him, and he, he could well have not got mm. to the ring. And uh, it did get to the ring, though. We got in there. He wouldn't stand for the national anthem. He wouldn't stand still. So uh, he rubbed me up wrong. Yeah. I told everybody, and it was a capacity crowd in and out of there. They got noses up against windows outside because mm. they couldn't get tickets. And I told everybody I intend to go in first round, feel him out, see what he's got, Step it up a gear, second round. After that happened in the chain in the medical room, because I was going for him and I, my uh, trainer was pulling me back. Mm. The only thing what stopped me was he says, You'll lose everything. And I stopped dead. Mm. He says, Your time's coming. And uh, went to the changing room. I says, forget what I've said to me trainer. I says, forget what I've said about stepping it up a gear and stepping it up a gear. I says, I'm just going to get straight out and flatten him. And that's what I did. Mate. I went out to put him down three times. He kept getting up, tough bugger. Got a, got a good mm. chin on him. And then the freakiest thing ever happened. 
one with a big left door to hit him, mm. miss with this, he were on the ropes, mm. miss with the punch, caught him with a forearm in his chest, knocked him over the second rope, and he landed with his back on the judge's table. <laughs> And they had to run round, everybody run round and shoved him back in. Mm. I said, you all right? He says, I kill him. I kill him. <laughs> said, Bring it on. And that was the final finale. Come for me then. Mm. 12 punch combination. Bump. Out. Count out. Steve Ward, at the age of 64, has won the world title. They retired me six days after because I was 65. <laughs> you did it just in time then. Just got it, mate. Mm. But what, a, what an exit from what I think is a nice career. 100%. From nine-year-old, from nine-year-old to, to 64. And there might still be something in the pipeline mm. now. I'm 66 now. I not tell you, but someone's just giving me a lot of chop, saying they'd, they'd have been a better world champion, they'd have knocked me out, they'd have done this, they'd have done that. I don't think so. Mm. So uh, maybe they'll get the chance to prove it. It'll be a non-sanctioned fight. But if it does come off, I'll make sure you get to know about it because mm. it'll be one of the biggest fights ever in England. Mm. Well, it's a weird, real big crowd. Steve, I think it's best we leave it on that note. Will he return? Will he not? Mate, it has been an absolute pleasure for you to share your story with us. But, mate, no, I just want to say right. thank you. Thank you to you for taking the time. No, no worries, mate. Well, anyway, I've been Lyndon Dixon. It's been Steve Ward, and we will see you again on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.